Hey everyone, in this tutorial you're going to learn about how to import various types of iClone content into Unity 3D. We're going to start off with the simplest item first, a static prop. I'm going to import these houses into Unity. The first thing I need to do is merge all the subprops together in iClone. Do that by selecting all, then picking one of the props as a parent for all of them. Then you can simply press the add button to save the whole thing as a single prop. Next what you can do is simply click and drag the whole thing into 3D Exchange 5. Not much else to do here other than simply export the scene. I'm exporting to FBX format here, and I'm going to make sure to set the target tool preset to Unity 3D. Once I click OK, all the prop geometry will be imported directly into Unity 3D, which I have open already. You may have some texture settings that need to be adjusted, so just click the Fix Now option to take care of that. Now from the Project tab, I'll just import in my merged scene into the scene window. The position might be off by a bit, so what I want to do first is reset all the transform positions back to zero. I can then position it a little lower in my game window to a more suitable height. And that's basically all there is to it. Now you have a cool little neighborhood scene that you can fully utilize in Unity 3D. The simplest type of content to import into Unity from iClone is the standard characters with their motions. The characters will be imported as avatars, which means that there are no further modifications required in order to apply any of the imported motions in Unity. iClone standard characters come with personas, which consist of custom motions personalized to that model. Once the character is selected, you can select the Edit in 3D Exchange button in the Modify menu to the right, and you will launch in 3D Exchange. I can preview the motions in 3D Exchange here as well to ensure the results are accurate. And the next step is straightforward. I'm first going to export my character's geometry to FBX format separately. Once I'm done that, I'll go through again the same process with my individual motions. When exporting the motions, we recommend exporting them as separate FBX files instead of a single multi-track FBX, as this will guarantee correct motion results in Unity. Just select the Save One Take Per File option to do this. The next step I want to take is to load my character and all of the animation files into Unity 3D. Notice that my character will import as an avatar and won't need to be assigned to a game object. Once that's done, I can reposition and scale my character to the desired size and position and get started on the animations. In Unity, all you need to do is click and drag your imported motions into the animation section of the inspector window, and they will automatically be added to that avatar. From then you can preview what the motions will look like within Unity by playing them back. Again, I can just drag the animation files from the project window and see the results. Once you've assigned a number of different animations, you can then try out how it operates using Interactive Control. You'll need to do some scripting first in order to control your character interactively like this. For more on Interactive Control scripts, check out our other tutorial on how to assign Interactive Control. Next up is importing animated props into Unity 3D. First in iClone, you'll want to take a look at your animated prop and check its actions to confirm everything's in proper working order. Then simply drop the file into 3D Exchange 5. Now, in order to load your character and motions into Unity 3D, they must be exported separately first. So in the export settings, make sure you select the Unity 3D preset, and then Geometry Only, so as to only export the model first. Also make sure that you select the Independent Skin Mesh option as well. Once I'm done that, I'll go through again the same process with my individual motions. Make sure you select Save One Take Per File, otherwise you'll just get one large file. Make sure you deselect the Include Geometry option as well. After that, just import your dog into your project, just like you did with the original prop, and drag it into the scene window. I can then add the motion files to my RoboDog as well, just like with my avatar. 
However, you'll notice that when I play back this time, the Robo Dog will fly off to the absolute root of the scene in the distance to perform the motion. What I need to do to avoid this is first create a new game object, and then assign it as a parent of my Robo Dog. This allows the Robo Dog to operate independently as its own game object. I'll rename my game object here, then put all of the axes of my RoboDog back to absolute zero. After that, I can go to the game object and adjust the axes to my desired position and height. Now you can see that when I apply the motions to my dog, I can preview them and the dog will stay. Good boy! Here's a quick sample of what things will look like in interactive mode. Importing an animal model into Unity 3D is very similar to what we just did with the RoboDog. Here I'm just testing out my various motions in the perform menu of my wolf to demonstrate what you can expect when it's fully imported into Unity 3D. Okay, first I'll export my motions. Make sure that geometry is deselected and that save one take per file is selected, so you will have separate files for each motion. Just follow the same steps for the character geometry, except this time make sure that include geometry is selected and include animation is deselected. Here I'm just applying multiple motions to my character geometry again. You can simply just click and drag the motions from your project window to add them to your character. But again, notice that my character geometry will return to 0, 0, 0 once I play back. Again, you can fix this the same way as with the RoboDog. Simply create a game object, assign the wolf character geometry to it, and then make sure the character geometry is at 0 on all the axes once again. After that's finished, you can position and rotate your character to the desired location. Now if we zoom in and take a closer look at the wolf, you'll notice that there's something wrong with the texture. We can fix this by going into the material setting of my wolf and adjusting the settings there. I'll want to go to the shader settings and change them from a simple transparent and diffuse to the cutout option and then choose the Bump Diffuse option. You can see that my wolf looks a lot less ghoulish once that's done. After all my motions are assigned and the texture has the correct setting, I can test out the movement again like you see me doing here. As you can see, it's super easy to take your content and animations from iClone into Unity 3D to be used in your gaming projects. iClone's powerful and easy animation tools and huge content library can save you enormous amounts of time. So, try it out.